The last topic to discuss in section 3.2 is the empirical rule. Now the empirical rule sometimes goes by the 68, 95, 99.7 rule. You'll actually see that online in other books. And it comes from these three percentages. So it's saying that if a distribution is roughly bell-shaped, which is an, um, another word for normal, right, bell-shaped. In other words, it has the picture that you see down below. <laughs> it has this picture. So if it has that shape, then roughly 68% lie within one standard deviation, 95% lie within two standard deviations, and 99.7% of the data will lie within three standard deviations. Now, a couple things. One, it has to be this shape. If it's not in this shape, if it's skewed left or skewed right, or if it's bimodal, bimodal mean it would have two peaks, like a camel, like a camel's back, then the empirical rule does not apply. So just note that, right? Um, now, these particular numbers, let's show you where they come from. So 68 comes from, the graph is symmetric. So 34 plus 34 makes 68. So from here, to here. You'll have 68%. And then from two standard deviations, 13 and a half plus 34 plus 34 plus 13 and a half makes 95. So that's where that's coming from. So from here all the way over to here would be 95%. And so on. Now there's some a few more things to make note of. 95% lying within two is actually a really common one. We use that one a lot. So it's just one to, of those three numbers, the one that we use the most often is the 95%. So just a little side note. Remember that unusual is less than 5%, which is less than, or oh, I wrote it down here. So see the unusual part below. See unusual below. Let me write that. So unusual, we defined as more than two standard deviations away, which, look down here, more than two standard deviations away. Here's two standard deviations away to the left. There's two and a half percent over here. Here's two standard deviations away to the right. There's two and a half percent over here. So two and a half percent plus two and a half percent makes five percent, which is where this part comes from. Right, so being beyond two standard deviations or, path, or less than five percent is unusual. Right, because it means you're off in these little bitty tails. Over here. Um, another thing to note is that the graph doesn't end where it seems like it ends. It actually keeps going. So this 0.15% is actually from three standard deviations and beyond. And also this 0.15% is actually from negative three standard deviations and beyond. It's this whole zone from here to infinity is 0.15%. All right, now we are going to have occasion, especially in chapter seven and beyond, to draw a normal curve and kind of know visually where things are. So let's talk about the attributes about a normal curve. Now, number one, the x-axis is a horizontal asymptote and it's symmetric about the mean. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, symmetric about the mean, look right here in the middle, that middle line, that's the mean. So right here, is the mean. Now I put mu in these notes, but it could also be x bar. It just depends on whether you're looking at a population or a sample. Either way. Okay. But this is still the mean. Put it in black. All right. Then it's much about the mean. It's got a horizontal asymptote. All that means is that the graph comes closer and closer and closer, but never touches that x axis the arrow kind of goes off like this, it does not cross. So that's all that means. So this part right here means it does not cross the x-axis. That's all. And this means the mean is in the middle. And it could be either one of the means. It just depends on whether you're working with a population or a sample. Now, very important, where do the inflections points fall? And what the heck are they? <laughs> well, inflection points, they mean a lot for us in calculus, if you ever take calculus. But if you don't take calculus, don't worry about it. If you can think of this as a roller coaster, matter of fact, think of it as a roller coaster, and you click, 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 get up to the top of the roller coaster, and then you start going down. 
this point right here is where your butt lifts off the seat, right? You ever have that sensation in like a car or on a roller coaster? That's the inflection point right here. Inflection point. And you'll notice there's two of them. There's one on that side and there's one at exact same height over on the other side. And that's the other inflection point. Now, they're very important because the inflection point is where the first standard deviation will fall. So the first standard deviation falls at one inflection point, right? At, at, excuse me, the first standard deviation falls at the inflection point, and that's one standard deviation away from the mean, right? Now, how do you eyeball that? I mean, if you're trying to draw this yourself, what you can notice is here's the top, here's the bottom. Halfway is like there, and it's just a touch above halfway between the bottom and the top of the graph. So that's how I eyeball it. Just a bit above halfway between the bottom and the top of the graph. And notice they have to be at the same height. So make sure you do that. That same height happens because the graph is symmetric. So because the, of symmetry involved here, these have to be the same height, and they also have to be the same distance away from the center. Right? That has to be one standard deviation, whatever that may be. All right. Um, some other rules for when you're dealing with the empirical rule. So the inflection point will actually be a very important deal. That's going to come back to haunt us in chapter seven for sure. And symmetric about the mean also, but that's less of a big deal. I mean, it's a big deal, but everybody gets that because you just put the mean in the middle. No problem. The inflection point's a little hard because you have to kind of visualize where it lands. Now, couple other things. One, you have to keep all the spacing and vertical even and consistent. So you'll notice this distance right here and this distance right here have to stay the same as this distance right here. It has to have um, consistent spacing. And each of those spaces is equal to the standard deviation, right? Whatever that standard deviation is, that's that distance. So if it's 10, then this is 10, 10, 10 across. Every section gets labeled with a percentage and the percentages never change. So those percentages, well, let me put it this way. They don't change for the empirical rule. So the percentages stay the same forever. They're 34%, 34%, 13.5%, two, right? That, those numbers never change, those percentages. What does change is the vertical lines get labeled with appropriate x values, and those change for every problem. So for example, if my mean is 100 and my standard deviation is 10, I would say 100, 110, 120, 130, right? And then this would be 90 because you're going to subtract 10, 80, 70. All right, so that would be one example. I would label all those vertical lines, but the percentages would be the same every time. But on a different example, say a different ex example two, I could say the, the mean was, I don't know, 800. And the standard deviation is 100. So that would make this 900, 1,000. 1100, then this would be 700, 600, 500. So those vertical lines change every time. The numbers that go with them change every time. You won't usually put these arrows here. I'm just trying to help you guys see. And you can see now, hopefully, why you need consistent spacing, because if it's 10, 10, 10, then that needs to be 10 on your number line every time. Or if it's 100, 100, 100, 100. You can't have some of them narrower and some of them skinnier or wider. They all have to be exactly the same width every time. 